Okay guys, so in the last video we built a linear regression model and it worked okay. There's just one problem and that is that housing prices are not 100% determined on the square footage. So because of that, there are definitely a lot of cases in which our model would not be accurate at all. For instance, you could have a very large house that doesn't have indoor plumbing and so that would make it a lot less expensive or you could have a really really nice house with a smaller square footage that would be more expensive or maybe it's in a good area so to account for this what we are going to do is we are going to build a deep neural network not just one neuron but a whole neural network and we're going to use that to predict housing prices so we're going to predict housing prices based on several different factors and for this I have a data set it's an actual data set of real housing prices it's actually the same as the last one except for I added some of the features in that I deleted for the linear regression model because remember with linear regression we were just using two values the X which was the square footage and the Y which was the housing price so we're gonna get started with this so first thing we need to do is to import our dependencies so we're gonna import Keras we're going to import numpy as NP and we're going to import pandas as pd. All right, next what we're going to do is we are going to get our CSV into our notebook. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna set df is going to equal to pd.read csv. And obviously you can import the data however you want. I'm just getting it from drive because it's already there. And then I'm going to take housing prices dot csv copy that path and then I'm gonna paste it into there for the content and also just to show you a little bit what our data looks like and this will help us later I'm gonna do df dot head so head is a very useful function basically what it's gonna do is it's going to print out like the first five values of the data set so that you'll be able to see sort of what your data looks like so we'll print that out and you'll see instead of just having square footage and then sales price, we have the year built, the second floor square footage, the greater living area, full bath, half bath, bedrooms above ground, total rooms above ground, year sold, and the sales price. So because we have more variables, we'll be able to get a lot more specific in our model's predictions. All right, so next what we want to do is we want to set the x and the y values. So the x value, if you remember last time, was equal to the square footage. However, this time the x value is actually going to be set to multiple values. It's going to be set to all of these values except for the sales price. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say x is equal to df dot drop and columns is going to equal to the sale price column. So basically x is equal to all of the columns except for the sale price column. And then our y value will be equal to, just like in the last video, to the sale price column. All right, so we'll run that. Everything looks good. Next is time to build the model. So if you remember last time, we're gonna build the sequential model. So model is going to equal to keras dot sequential next up we're going to add three layers of neurons so the first layer is going to be model dot add keras dot layers dot dense because it's a dense neural network uh, the number of neurons in this layer is going to be eight now in choosing the correct number of uh, neurons per layer generally you just kind of have to experiment. There is no exact science to getting this. That's part of the art of data science is being able to experiment a little bit with the different values. You know, you remember in the last video, like the learning rate and the batch size, it's the same thing too with neurons. So generally what people do is they will uh, assign neurons to the number of attributes they are in hopes that the neural network will kind of, will kind of uh, see a pattern there and pick up on it and be able to be more accurate. Uh, also, a good thing to note, the, amount, the more layers you have and the more neurons you have, the slower your network's going to train. So that's another thing to note. But yeah, so keras.add dense will have eight neurons. 
our activation shin function will be relu for rectified linear units. Basically what this is saying is this takes all the values and then it normalizes them on a scale of zero to one. And the algorithm that does this best is called relu, where basically it's just saying if it's between if it's closer to one, then it's one. If it's closer to zero, it's zero. And this has been found to work the best overall. That, that's all you really need to know about ReLU. You've also probably might have heard of sigmoid or tanh, stuff like that. But ReLU is generally considered to be the best in most cases, including this case. And then since this is our input layer, the input shape is going to be equal to again, eight, which is the number of columns here. Well, I should say number of columns except for sales price. That's what I should say. Yeah. Okay, so next, right here, model.add, we're gonna add a second layer and it's basically gonna do the same thing. So keras.layers.dense, it's gonna be size eight. The activation function will again be ReLU and the input, well, sorry, no input shape this time because this is in the input layer. Okay, and then finally, our last layer will be model.add keras.layers.dense and this will be a size of one because remember, we're just outputting one single value and that is the sales price. So that's why there's only one neuron there. Finally, let's compile the model. So model.compile, let me pull up the tab to see what we need. Okay, we need our optimizer. So the optimizer will be Atom because it's generally considered to work the best. And for loss, we're going to have mean squared error, just like in the last video. Okay, so let's run that. We don't have any errors, that's good. Okay, next up we need to fit the model. So model.fit, so that we can start training. We're gonna put in X and Y, and then we're going to say the epochs are gonna be equal to 30 again, so we're gonna go over the data 30 times. And then, so another thing that I wanna show you guys is that, remember when I said before about overfitting, how sometimes the loss gets too small, or like the loss is getting smaller and smaller slowly, but then it gets small really fast, and that's usually a sign of overfitting. So to stop that, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called early stopping. So we're going to set callbacks, equal to keras dot callbacks dot early stopping and we'll give it a patience of five which is another thing that you can experiment with so basically what this is going to do is the model is going to be training and then once it gets to a point where it's not getting much better it's going to stop it even if we still have some epochs left so this will save you some time and some cpu space all right, so that looks like it's about it. So, oh, excuse me, Epo uh, early stopping patience is going to be equal to five. There we go. Okay, so we'll run that. So it's going through the epics, the epochs, and it looks like it made it to 30 without early stopping. And it did it pretty fast too. We got that down. Now let's uh, test out our model. So we're gonna test out our model on some test data. And the test data, I'm gonna to equal to a numpy array, so mp.array. And what I'm going to equal it to is I'm going to equal it to this first column right here. So we know what the value of this house is, but we're gonna see what the model thinks the value of this house is. So I'll do that. Make sure that there are um, commas there. Okay, good. And now we're going to run this test data in the model. So we're going to print model.predict 
and we're gonna say test data and we're gonna have to reshape it because right now it's in a in a column instead of a row I believe so we're gonna reshape it to 1 8 and the batch size is going to be equal to 1 because there's only one batch so we'll print this out oopsie daisies looks like we forgot a value there oh I accidentally put in the um, sale price of the house which is not what we want we want to predict the sales price so we'll see here it says that the estimated price of this house is about two hundred and four thousand dollars now if we go up to the top you can see it's actually two hundred and eight thousand dollars so we're only about four thousand dollars off for the house which is pretty good given the fact that we only had 1,400 samples and how quick this model trained as well. So next, let's say that you really like this model and you want to save this model, deploy it to the cloud, use it for later. I know right now as a beginner this might not seem like uh, something that you might want necessarily, but in the future it will definitely help you a lot. So in order to save your model, what you're going to do is you're going to say model.save and then we're going to uh, in here put what we want the model to be saved as so we could say housing model dot h5 that's the file format so we'll put that in here and then if we refresh in files you'll see housing model dot h5 is here so you can download this and then you can run this anywhere or basically if you wanted to pull up on this model so say you want to make another prediction but you don't want to retrain the model we'll set old model equal to keras.models.load model and it's going to be um, housing model dot h5 so we do this and then it's going to call on this right here so it's going to load up the same weights and then you see right here if we redo this code right here it's going to input output the exact same value so that's how you save models and then uh, if you want to put this in a website you could just add this to flask add this to a python file whatever you want but that's basically how you save and load models but yeah guys that's pretty much it so we just made our model a lot more accurate in predicting housing prices with square footage in the next video we're going to be working with something a little bit more difficult we are going to be predicting handwritten digits and then assigning them to what the digits actually represent. So we're going to train a model that can see a, see a number and then say what that number is, which is pretty cool. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Scribd. Now just as a side note, Scribd did not sponsor me to make this video, I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine, and instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, ebooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no-brainer. And right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd, and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months, and I can continue learning, and you can also continue learning with your 60-day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.